Hey guys, it's Joe here, and welcome back to the last episode of the Lion Song. I need to get some closure with this episode, last episode by playing episode four. Closure. That fit perfectly well. So we get straight on into this. We're at the train station. Let's dizzy on do this. You look sad, bro. Why? What'd you do? Bought the train. She stands in the room. It's time. Well, I. Yes, sir. What is my compartment again? Where's my blaster ticket? What compartment did it say? Was it nine? Oh, who bloody knows? Five to eleven. It must be in the wrong compartment door. Compartment door. Is this? Oh, excuse me. Not that one. Good day, uh... Oh, I'm sorry. Passenger. This is quite a gracious book. I'm in the mood for a conversation. Anyway, I'm going to find the right... Cabin. Compartment. Ugh. Empty. Definitely not my compartment. Well, let's keep rolling. To the next wagon. Oh, wait a minute. My ticket... At last, that was a six out of nine. This must be the right compartment. Oh, yeah. Is this seat taken? How far are you going? All the way to the end of the line. Aren't we all? Just a short little introduction to the Lion Song. But I can live with that. I wonder if this episode's gonna be as long as the other is that. What? Oh! Ouch! <laughs> well, the dude's away. I believe this is yours. Oh, thank you. Hey, this is all yours. Photograph. Photograph of a few students. You must have dropped it. Your photograph? Farm boy, gentleman. Farm boy. Excuse me, yes. Do you play the harmonica or any polishes? Say, do you play the harmonica or any polishes? Beautiful son. Excuse me. Is there any news? Not from this page, any local news. Anything about Vienna? Go about to success in the market exhibition, great success. Face Professor, refocus his research. A! Alright, success after. Yes! Oh, okay, so that's chapter 1, chapter 2, and chapter 3. That's cool. So do that one. Concert. Not him, but, um, the portrait artist. That's a shooting star whose art has so much truth to it. That indeed. Excuse me. Who are the both people in the photo? The professor Renich and her class. Her? The first woman lecturer in mathematics at the university. That's me in the front there. She was one of the best lectures I had in university. I remember her do with Zana. Wouldn't have been I would have been so lenient with him. They worked together afterwards. Yes, for a while. But his sister died of tuberculosis soon after the duel. He became a remote supporter of Turkey but just research. I had no idea. I had no idea. Professor Mr. was funny too. She always managed to make us understand highly complex concepts and she told great jokes too. That's all you need, make class laugh and teach them what they need. About a year ago. The way the change can be maintained, formulating a new state at a time. Theodore, did you understand what we just heard? You didn't pay any attention again, did you? No, I didn't. But it's far easier to follow Professor Nerman's lessons. No, don't pretend. Professor is an exceptional teacher, even as substitute. Look here, it's easy. 
Notes, scribble, joke. Explain lesson. Look here. The destination of the second change is the inverse function of a change. What? Um. Imagine a dog that really needs to pee. What? Just listen for a second, would you? If the dog peed, the liquid would be gone. That's genius. Oh, for crying out loud, it wasn't finished, you blockhead. Alright, go on. So, reckon is this theory basically asks the question, can the amount of liquid change but stay the same? Ah, the question is answered by the secondary change. If the dog drinks water while peeing, the amount of liquid would stay the same, hence forming a new state of time. <laughs> so over time, a recognition state. I think your examination is all wet. I give you your higher mathematics. I give you higher mathematics, you give me puns. Why are you being stupid about it? Oh. Well, I'm just here for the jokes. And that is what separates us from the sciences. We're looking beyond how something appears. We look for a deeper truth about the world. In everything and in everything it could be. It reminds me of a joke. A theological physicist and a mathematician watch three people go into an empty room. After a while, five people exited the room. The theologist exclaimed, it's a miracle. The physicist scoffed, clearly there's been a measuring error. Finally, the mathematician proclaims, not to go in, no one would be in the room. <laughs> Confess, I don't understand. Maybe not. But she did change a lot at the university. I remember when my cousin wanted to study physics. Many months ago. Uh, okay, so we're all gonna meet up, I'm assuming. Because it seems to be a lot of like backtracking in this episode. May I help you, sir? I'm here to speak to a member of the radius. Are you indeed? There's a private gathering and they're not to be disturbed, especially by a student. Fine, then I would like to use a lavatory. That's right with you. Surely not, I would be fooled again. So when did I see the radius? Young man, you're not getting in the room unless you pass the test. I've had some bad experiences in the past. Very well, what is your test? Tell me name three members of radius. Should have been listening. I'm Fred, there's no pressure on the radius. Of course there is. That's who I want to see. The radius, good day. Wait, wait. Oh, I mean, of course, there's a rainet. How could you forget Miss Emma? I don't know. She's the heart and soul of Radius. Lovely woman. Red and that one. What is Majesty? Um. Correct. Well, may I enter now? No. Why would I pass your test? Well, perhaps. But no, you called for Emma by the wrong name, so you must not know her very well. Which means I will not let you enter the Radius. Please leave now. What's wrong? Can't you find the door? Fine, I won't bother the race. I'm hungry and thirsty. I'd like a seat. And you would not send away a paying customer, would you? Close enough. Thomas? Could you send the gentleman to a table and keep an eye on him? Certainly. Follow me, Mihaya. Here we are. Take a seat, I'll be right back. Ha, oh, I don't think so. I just need to get past him into the radius. Familiar looking man. Oh, that's Victor Allen, leader of the Society Democratic Party. If I weren't in a hurry to meet Professor Red, I would go and introduce myself. Well, that was easy. Hold it right there! Damn it, I just wanted to go to the bathroom! Damn it. Toilet door. I don't need to go to the toilet right now. I should avoid drinking too much coffee, though.
Damn, damn it. Can I go into the kitchen? Wait, uh, excuse me. Um, excuse me. Excuse me. Yes. I'd like to order a drink. Sorry, what would you like? Some coffee, please. Thanks. Excuse me, excuse me. I'd like to order a cake. Right away. Yes. Ready, finally. Go, 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 go. You, doctor, ma'am, woman, I need to talk to you. My girl, Emma. And who do we have here? Oh, I do believe this is one of my students. Theodore, isn't it? That's right, Professor. Well, come on in. What can we do for you? Theodore, it's good to see you. I apologize for bursting in on you like this. What can I help you with? I have a favor to ask of you. Oh? I have a cousin who wants to study physics at the university. Bravo. Well, why come to me? Maria is a good girl. A woman. Almost a woman. Ah. I don't understand all too well. Is she bright? Like a sun in a midday. She wants to follow in the path of Marie Cure. Bright and ambitious then. Please tell her to come talk to me. I promise I'll do whatever I can to see that she's allowed to enroll. Thank you, Professor. Why is Professor Nomad? I don't know. He's been missing for quite a while now. Yes. Sorry. Goodbye. Your man, excuse me. Professor Ranch? Is that you? Yes, oh, but you're not smoking. Have you given it up? No. I have a call I can't seem to shake. <laughs> I hope you get well soon. Well, he's dying. It's not a cough. Smokers. Smokers cough. The day to you, Professor. Um, okay, so that's all done. Come on now, I want my cake. Even though I don't really eat cake, but you know. Leave. Like, I barely eat cake in real life. It's not my favorite thing in the world. The professor knows it votes was all it took. Patsy would grumble and wave their arms as usual, but in the end, the professor almost always prevail. Maria was allowed to enroll. She was an actual professor. Not officially no, but that was what the students called her. And even some of the faculty members. Remarkable woman. I remember when she was leaving the university to write this book. Several months ago. Professor, why must you go to Manchester? This my students all need so much attention. Where will I find time to write my book? Well, I for one don't know what to accept this change. I'll miss you. Well, I'll miss you too. You need something to remind me by. Well, I would have thought the mark I gave you in your last exam would be enough, Richard. <laughs> Something to remember for that. Oh, a photographer. Should we should take a picture? However, this man is currently talking to a photographer. <laughs> Young boy. Hello, boy. Good morning. Could you and your father move? He's busy. I can see that. But I really need to talk to that gentleman. As a photographer, yes. You will have to wait, just like me. Wait, 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 and I get. Can you help me? I'm bored. If you get me something to play with, maybe I'll help you. I don't suppose you like vegetables? Ugh, no. You can't just wait, you know. That's apparently what good boys do. Hmm. I think Lucas is something that might entertain the boy. Ah, yeah, shut up, Lauren. Lucas! Lucas. Yes. Can I have some of those snap bangs? I don't want to cause a riot, though. Please, don't worry, it'll be fine. Uh, what do you want them for? It's complicated, but I don't need many. Just five. Alright, I don't have a lot more after that, thanks. Be careful. Here you go, little boy. Hello, boy. I have something for you. 
What's all there? You throw them on the ground, they go. <sighs> oh, gimme, gimme, gimme! Should only throw one at a time. Uh, where'd you get that? That's enough! Let's go. Well, not go as I planned, but now I can tell the photographer at least. Excuse me? Yes? Could you take a group picture for me? Are my friends over there? Of course! Just gather them together in front of the camera. Professor, photographer. How about a picture? Perfect. A secondary chance to maintain the state and where we're in right now. I wonder if anything will change now. It's part of moving, everything changes. 321 kilometers to go. Jesus, a long time. Depends on also the speed that we're going at, the velocity, more speed, distance traveled per kilometer. So, beautiful farm boy gentleman. Get to know the gentleman more. That's Market, you know him? You know him? Yes, I know him and his work. Quite well, as a matter of fact. Although we've never met. Ah, so this is how all the three stories intertwine. months ago. This copy is coming along nicely. Oh. Greta is showing my latest portrait this evening at the saloon. I'm very proud of you. I'm very proud of you. Tough subject, as you see. I'm sure you'll capture him or her admirably. Market himself and another expedition? More work for you, poor old fella. Thanks for inviting me, Market. Hold right there. Boy, there. He's right behind me. I need to hide somewhere. You want to escape this time? Uh oh. Stop! Sir. You dropped your painting. How can this be? Hold it right there! You keep it. What is it? It's... It's one of mine. Stop, Webler! There's a misunderstanding again. Nicole! Oh, have you seen a little girl? She's running away again. Bless you, he's an angel. He's saying you're right in front of me. Um, excuse me. I asked you about a little girl, Nicole. Ah, uh, so it was your gorgeous voice echoing through the streets, calling me to you. No, uh, she just goes. What? I take you to your name is Nicole then as well. My dear. You can call me whatever you desire. When I desire, you need to tell me where you've seen Nicole or not. You. Man of your dreams. Man, my nightmares more like it. No, you mention it. I did see a little girl. Which direction did she go? I can tell you. You can tell me your name. I don't think so. Halt! Oh. Remember me? Ha ha ha. You're right. He's right behind me. I don't think it doesn't matter where I pick because it's just going to go in different directions anyway, bumping into different characters along the way. Oh! You cannot escape! They're blocking my way. Stand right there. Don't worry, officer. I can't run away. You've got me. At last. 
Get on in. Stop! I encountered the markets often, but I was beneath their interest. I was invisible to them, probably because I'm not very outgoing. Prison. Indeed, that should be a challenge to the street artists. You copy famous paintings for the tourists. Something like that, yeah. Marquette's early works weren't as sophisticated as his latest portraits. It feels as if he was an overnight sensation. I like to think of the people around him. His patron, grandson, allows me. And even I, in my own small way, helped him evolve so quickly. We were never so formally introduced, but I made my presence felt few weeks ago. I wonder, is this the right place? There he is, no. That can't be, he isn't too fond of ours. It's probably just some other snob. Of course that is, everyone knows her. You oof, what did you call me? Who's that person, a failed artist? Or a beggar? Maybe both, ha ha ha. It's definitely the place. So distinguished audience. Ugh, dressed like this. Will stand out like a donkey amongst racehorses. In disguise clothes the man. I think anyone mind you borrowing their jacket. Uh, who is that? Certainly does not belong here. Should find a proper disguise first. Additional clothes won't help me fit in. Oh dear. Who might you be? A collector. Of what lies? What? But then again, I do not care. Just so you know, they'll kick you out if you keep walking in these clothes. Napkins. Hmm. Who's myself as a stylish scarf? Almost cutter. What else is there? Mm. Excuse me. So you says my glass. Here you go. Cheers. So let's go over here. Yes. Uh, please excuse me. What's your unveiling? Doesn't look like the unveiling will start anytime soon. Good evening, madame. Good evening. Do I know you from somewhere? You don't remember me. I'm terribly sorry, but I can't recall your ugly face. Um, I'm sorry. Can't seem to remember where we met either. Well, if you do, please enlighten me. You know more about France Lozier? Waiter. Yes, please. Thank you. I don't know something about the guests here. What would you like to know? What is Frolly like? She's a genius if I ever saw him. Painting is easy. What? But distinguishing art from the mundane, she sure quite agree. And recall real from fake is that is hard. Well, we put it that way. Some indications are indeed quite good. What do you miss in poison entirely? Never mind. I'm afraid that answer is the crest is no. Do you often work events at least? Yes, but I'm not serving at the cafe. I try to focus on events on cultural significance. How can you tell what's cultural significance? Oh, you must be joking. Just look at the people that gather here. The creme de la creme of Vienna. The last time I saw the all in one place was when I was waiting tables at Hey, Clem's birthday. Oh, interesting. Is that it? Well, thank you. Clem's birthday. Probably must have been there as well. You again, do you remember when we met? We met at Gustav's birthday party. There were so many there. You must excuse my hazy memory. It's no trouble. What did you want to speak to me about? What about? Marquette's latest subject. Do you know who his latest subject is? We were seen... Sweet enough, will we not? Nevertheless, from what I've heard, he or she was a challenging subject. I can tell you that it is someone he is quite familiar with. Oh, most interesting. Was there anything else? Tell me about. 
What have you been doing lately? Oh. A rather personal question, when you say. I'm sorry, it's just looks so forward to your critiques. Ah. Well. Was there anything else? What about who Marquette will paint next? Who knows? He's a German person that can be no doubt there can be no doubt about that. It's hard to predict what the next pink of his interests so I've noticed. I will leave you be. Excuse me. I think they're about to start. Keep painting, Marquette. We keep making a fortune together. You are an art dealer? I sell paintings, yes. Here is my card. I'm always pleased to welcome new patrons. Good to know. Yes, and I've sold a couple of yours already, her Clint. Since none of us know what tomorrow may bring, I may as well confirm what you already suspect. I am a forger. You copy an artist's work and then sell it as an original. Only fine art understands. There is so much direct on display these days. I copy only the best. You copy more than one of markets, yet I take it. How can I not? Like it was a dream come true. I copied several of these earliest works and then sold them to the richest tourists who knew no better. But... Um, you decided to concentrate your own inspiration. Inspirations? Shall I list to you the artist whose work was only discovered after they were dead? I'd rather not wait for my reward. My mistake. What were you going to say? He outgrew both him and unfortunately me. Just Ladies and gentlemen, please gather round. It's time for the unveiling of France's latest work. Who will it be? Any ideas? These subjects are from all classes of walks of life. It's impossible to know. Well, I hope it's a man. It says he has affairs with all of his female models. What you mean is you hope he paints you. Well, of course, I would be honoured. Oh. Oh. Good moves, too. Yo, how do you get a painting to move? I knew at once there was no way I could copy that. Have you seen his most recent painting? Yes. His work has turned darker of late. As if the light were gone out in the world. 104 kilometers left to go. So you left to talk to me. Excuse me, yes. What brings you on this train? Me? My family. I've been sending them money. That's very noble of you. I've barely been able to help support them. Yes, do you know any other songs? I know one, I can try. that piece. The Lion Song. Wilma Dolphrey composed it. I know it as well. It is a classic. And I? You couldn't walk across the university without hearing someone rehearse it in the music school or humming it on the way to class. She's my sister. Oh right, and Mozart's my uncle. I can usually tell when someone is lying to me. I think our friend here speaks the truth. Nonsense. Look at his clothes. A farmer's idea of dressing well. Me, yes. Tell me about your sister. Tell us about your sister. Wilma didn't always live in Vienna. She grew up on a farm with Mama and Papa and me. But one night that all changed. Tell us. <laughs> Beautiful, Wilma. A few years ago. Well play, big sister. We have to hurry, Otto. Papa told us to be home before ten. I'll collect the money.
Oh man. The young one plays well. Mumu is self-taught, and she writes many of her own songs. What's that you say? She's elf-taught? Do you think I'm daft? I suppose elves made her violin. She taught herself to play, and Papa brought her violin and milk. Oh, oh. Well, here then. Thank you. I'm glad you like what you heard. I should ask them if they like when there's milk music. Send your sister over, boy. I have something I'd like to discuss with her. If you enjoyed the songs, could you spare a few coronins? That isn't all I want to enjoy. She plays the violin for money, and that's all. Now pay up or shut up. Watch your mouth waver or snap you in two. You just try it, uh. Sir? Sir, my songs are meant to soothe, not sour. I'm sure Otto, and my papa, and my three uncles would not take kindly to anyone who spoiled the mood. She's right. There are a fearful lot of doys. Don't you want our money? Oh yes, here. Money for the music. Thank you. Please give my regards to your wife. Could have beaten him. Someday I'll show you how strong I am. I don't recognize him and he looks like he should have at least some coin on him. This is Professor Cabin. He has an offer for Wilma. And what do you want with my sister? Your man, I assure you my intentions are honorable. Oh? I'm Arthur Cabin. He is my card. As you see, I'm a professor of music theory. From Vienna. Vienna? It was only by chance that Professor Cabin stopped and in on his way to Salzburg. He was very impressed with Wilma's songs and told us he would try and arrange a scholarship for her and the institute where he taught. It was a dream come true for her, one our parents could not have paid for. Her play in the English help your family. She must have been thrilled for the opportunity. She wasn't though. Our farm and the village were all she knew. The owner sounded big and terrifying. What is it like growing up with a prodigy like Wilma? <laughs> a prodigy, Wilma? She was years older than Mozart. Most girls her age were already married. Okay then. What is it like growing up with your big sister? Well, of course big sisters are given to young brothers to tease, of course. She could hear music even when none was playing. I guess it came from her, inside her. She would close her eyes and listen lost to the world, listening to the music playing in her head. And naturally you were respectful of that. Naturally. Well, no. It was apparently time to steal her violin and hide it. Perfect. <laughs> I'll show them that I can play too. Alright. It's right there. Just need to wait for the right moment. If I hear women should not be able to see me. Let me own Otto and steal it from yourself. Who well, knows me if I'm while well, I move while she's humming or playing? Back here, women should not be able to see me. Careful now.
Anyway, until she's humming. Ah, uh, so. Ha 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 ha! I'm telling you, it wasn't easy. It took skill and dare to steal that violin. Where did you hide it? Oh, someplace out of the way, but safe. I didn't want anything to happen to it. Again. You took up the harmonica because of your sister. I guess I did in a way. Papa gave it to me. I'm not very good at it. At least not as good as Wilma. There was always music in her. I sense another story. <laughs> you asked a lot of questions. I'm a journalist. Well, at least I was. There isn't much more to tell. It was after Wilma got her violin. We don't have much, so naturally, I was jealous. May has come, and trees blossom, and now clouds blow, blue skies and springs on her song. Well done. Many years ago, both of you. Play it again! <laughs> Wilma, what is it? Did we miss a note? No, you played it as written. We sang it as written. Here we go again. Then what is wrong? Can't you hear it, Papa? The passage here. And now close, close. The notes are so boring. But we always sing it like that. I want to sing it in the same way. But it's boring. Hold on, both of you. Papa, you need to play better notes. Can't you hear how exciting it could be? <laughs> Show me. Remember me? You play, Papa. Not Wilma. That your sister try also. Fine. It's alright. Show us. Look like this. That's very good. I want to keep playing. You, the notes don't have to be so well matched. Each can have its own life. Oh. Go on, keep playing. Wait. Then we should change what we sing too. Oh. Then what do you have in mind? I can come up with something too. Let's see. Flowers have sprung and the clouds are gone. We will sing we are singing with my papa and my sister is dumb. Oh sorry. <laughs> You've not sing that. And the bugs have much fun. Alright, you can sing that if you want to. Now we'll not play. There. Can you play it like this? No. You were right. The violin is yours, Wilma. Keep it. Play it. Make your music. <sighs> she trembled. Looked down at her violin in her hands. Her eyes were shining. That was the beginning. I'd heard her in concert. I wonder what, what I'll hear another concert. They were always in music, my friends. Even here. 22 kilometers left. Oh, that's all. Okay. Gentlemen, you have done the impossible. You have taken my mind from our destination. I thank you. Not so fast. You are a journalist. You must have a story to tell. The last is a short one. I wanted to write, but my family was against it. A baron's son must naturally be in the military, so I couldn't continue writing. I wish I had a story like one of yours. The four of us are certainly headed for some a story of some kind. Though yours will be quite different, I think. How do you mean? Well, three of us are enlisted men. Fifth army here. The same. 
Whose army, yes. And head of the camp of the West Jury River. But you are an officer. Sixth army, yes. Is it that obvious? Not only that, but you brought the brain at Western Nurse. The military academy is a I'm ill prepared to be a soldier in kind of six months training, to be a leader of men. I suppose it goes without saying, but I'd rather write. I write the stories we told. They are records of our life we may never see again. Write what you see in the coming weeks, months. Someone must write down so that there will be another ward like this. I think it'll be over soon, don't you? No, I don't. But I don't. Ag but I agree. Write the stories we've told if you feel they have value. But write too of the men you lead. Their stories matter even more. Also, are you going to the war to support your family? Well, why are you on this train? I'm not interested in hearing your plateaus. You helped me. Let me help you. You can't. Why? Tell me why you enlisted. I didn't, Lieutenant. I was drafted. Otto, you are going to war to support your family? So I will be left home. Now it's my turn to help. But I have no talent to speak of. It not take much talent to point a rifle and pull the trigger. More than you might think, young man. I'll tell you this. I'm not I'm no coward. I'll be at the front of the charge. And that does not take talent. I believe in you. You'll do well. Yes, your sister has talent, but she did not just waltz on top of the stage. I look, it took time and effort to become who she is now. But in the end, she fled home all the same. All opportunities wanted. I gave my word. I'll fight until my last breath but I must. Playing the hero. What's wrong with that? Can't see you working yourself up. You think you're ready for the blood and he's like fire in your veins. Yeah? I f it feels like that. Is that wrong? It's not, but must prepare for what's coming. How did your sister prepare for writing her songs? Hmm. She has faced her fears head on. She never accepted any help. But you're not alone on the battlefield. You stand between everybody back home and chaos. You protect Wilma's song. That song will remind you of home, of family, friends, loved ones. I won't let them down. You will if you rush headlessly into enemy fire. You cannot be thoughtless. To be honest, to be thoughtless is to be blind. All oh, reminds me of the Shakespeare quote. Blind, I don't understand. Generally will drive you, but nonetheless it will blind you. Nice poetry there. You've been in a situation before. Your story, the men at the inn where your sister played. Your family needed the money and you swallowed all of your anger and took it. I never should have taken the money. Staying calm can make it sound so easy. It's not. It's the most difficult thing there is. Women's choices seem to have a great influence on your life. Even watching from the sidelines, I was changed. Will you think about what I've said? I know you mean well, but I'm sure of myself. I've done living on Wilma's shadow. I will fight for myself and my family. I wonder if I could have changed his mind. Had Wilma made different choices. Did it all wage your list? 
Because war is madness. <laughs> oh, that makes so much sense. How do wars start? Greed for wealth or land? Fear of those who are not like us and therefore must mean us harm? Revenge on Zenith's bullets? And you think you can stop all of that? Probably not. Not by myself, anyway. But I thought... I thought I could at least try. Hmm. I know that sounds foolish. Do you have something in mind? Yes. What makes the decision to make war? Politicians, not soldiers. If more politicians spend time facing an enemy beyond bayonet to bayonet, maybe they would have had tried. Maybe they would try harder to find another solution. Another solution. A solution like you did with the photo when the professor was leaving. Instead of laminating, you took charge into your own hands. Precisely. You sound very passionate about this. And naive, I suppose. Mr. CEO is oblivious. You remind me of myself. You seem to have a gift with words. Your professor taught you well. Maybe. And still she distinguishes as shell. I will speak only the truth, no shame, no disgust. What stops you from doing that? What would inspire the people? But I don't know if I am brave enough. You have the courage, I can see it in you. You see more in me than I do, naturally. It's just how people work. Just like Benedict, how so? Wouldn't you call it brave that your professor took over Nehmer's classes? Yes, of course. Extraordinary so. But how am I brave? You care, Otto. Otto's will see that and listen. You're putting yourself, you're putting your life in the others on live viewers. You're passionate people who respond to you. You care. Others will see that and listen. And what if people listen? How do I know what I'm proclaiming is right? You're a scientist, are you not? What of it? You can't know if you're right, but whether there's new data. You adapt your theory. Rachel did it in a duel with Zana, remember? She could have destroyed his career. Something changed in the lecture hall. She acknowledged his efforts and respected him. Yes, together they accomplished so much more. I wish I could be as sure as you are. You study mathematics so you understand odds. Of course. I would bet on you. I'm sure your professor would too. It does sound like something she would do. Based on all you've told us, it seems the changes she brought were not just for her, but for everyone. What do you mean by that? She did not just focus on her own theories. She changed something in others around her through her teaching. And I can too. We're almost there. There I must change. My men must see me do not. We're coming to the station. Where's Paul? He just left after you did. I don't think he'll be joining us at the front. He won't if he gets shot. He won't if he gets shot deserting. He must still be on the train though. I'll go and look for him. Soldiers. Mark. Paul. You're leaving us? You're going to try and stop me. You don't think too much of yourself, do you? My turn to get psychoanalysis, Dr. Fraud. It doesn't take a fraud to know you. I'll die out there. Maybe. Maybe we all will. But if you run now and you're caught, no maybes. You will die. I've escaped the police for years. They won't catch me this time either. This time, it won't just be the police looking for you. It will become a manhunt. You can't escape that. What makes you think you know me, son of Baron? I don't. Think about it. Copy Market one last time. He didn't shy away from challenge. But even he didn't dare paint his greatest critic. The train is slowing. You sound the alarm. No, it's your decision. 
You were right. You make a good leader. I'll do my best. Please leave me now. I have a decision to make. Hello, men. I'm glad you're re I'm glad you reconsidered, Paul. Gentlemen, we got to we got to different battles, but I'd be proud to have you on my command. I was everything in my power not to fail my men. If I fail them, I'll be failing you. My name is Albert Vaughn. Everyone calls me Bert. Um, whoever. Otto Danford. Theodore Lurcher. That was nice. I like that. In 1914, shortly after the assassination of Archduke Franz Fraud, men were drafted. It was the beginning of the First World War. Otto went to the war to defend his family and his country. As he lay dying, looking up into the darkened sky, and the song was on his lips. Poor Otto. Paul stopped running away. Committing to something for the first time in his life, he returned to Freda. A few years later, that commitment turned to a small, happy family. In the four years of war, something inside of Theodore changed. In career in politics, he swore to prevent another war at all costs. And for a short amount of time, women's music was a huge success. She was a darling of Vienna. Her life in Vienna never matched her dreams. With too many disappointments, she returned home. A broken heart never mended. late autumn afternoon, a woman stepped into Leo's Honey's Inn. She sat down silently. When asked what she'd like to have, she smiled and answered, A plate of your world-famous dumplings, Leos. The music that brightened the early years of the 20th century fell silent after the outbreak of war. Franz Market must have done something to change his grandfather's mind. He began to climb again soon after his grandson's success. Franz became a central market member of the new art movement in Vienna. His unique view of the world inspired many and personal discipline. That's cool. Franz drafted one year after the war broke out. In brief quiet, before dawn he drew the layers of his comrades. Nineteen eighteen, Gustav Clement died, marking the end of an era. Emma recognized Emma Regine moved to the United Kingdom accepting an offer to become a lecturer for mathematics at the University of Yorkshire. I wonder if these are all true stories about Throughout the 20th century, many scientists' discoveries were credited to Emma's proof of the recognised states. I'm not pronouncing her name wrong, I'm sorry. Emma kept writing to Nicole for the rest of her life. Nicole found she didn't have quite as many things as she used to. That's sweet. During the war, the University of Vienna was transformed into a military hospital, but lessons continued to be learnt whenever students and their teachers could meet. The war changes a lot for you. The First World War came to an end in 1918. Turned up with military and civilization casualties, amounting more than.
Oops, and then I wouldn't know if this is a real story or not. I assume so, but 38 million lives are lost in World War II. Oh no. And World War II came not on the whole time. Really, I'm pretty sure that's more people than we have in Australia. That's insane. Seventeen also took the money, yeah, I was a bit meh. We're able to escape from the police. We're able to use a snap bang. Unco also encouraged the two men. All the soldiers mobilized in World War One were casualties. Jesus. I really do wonder. Every connection you have displayed between episodes is stored. Dear Arthur, transpiring. Oh, I missed some. Oh, that was in episode one. So what about episode two? I only got three things. I missed one, two, three. I missed five different things that I know of. Oh, and this one I got four out of five. I only missed one, so even here, so many decisions, not famous enough. Interesting. Oh, Nicole! Nicole! Hello, Nicole. Hi, Em. What must your parents travel so much? Hmm. My papa works all over the world. What's his job? He does something with metal, I think. What about your mother? She travels with him. I heard my run so that. He doesn't roar. I don't know what she meant by that. Would you like to travel? Yes. My mum probably tried taking me where it was first. We travelled to Egypt. Do you know where Egypt is? It's very loud there. Lots of people talking. I like it. Hmm. What do you dream of doing? Uh, I'd like to eat some cake later. <laughs> what do you want to do when you grow up? I want to do something later when I can just do it now. Maybe something you're not allowed to do yet. I'd like to tell people what I think of them. What they should do, what they should have to listen. That would be my dream. No one would call history lesson. Just make my own history that way I like it. Is there anything you don't hate? Hmm. Well, you, of course. And Uncle Leos? And Mama? What about your father? I don't know. He doesn't like me. Not the way you and Uncle Leos do. People are weird. People are complex. I guess. Bye. In episode four. What a waste. So I got that one, that one, I got a piece of that. It's life in the city of Vienna didn't turn out as she expected. We will return home. Wilma poured her soul into composing, it was worth it. France Lady's masterpiece was already astonishing by obtaining the special paint made it worth it. Hi, Greta. 
Hmm. Everything changed, nothing did. There were these bright sparkles with new ideas and glimpses of what art could and should be. Then came the war and with that fear. And in its way the stupidity or day to day of survival. Ooh. Jeez. So yeah, that's the end of the Lion Song. That series has finished. Thank you guys all so much for watching. Let me know in the comments below which one was your favorite episode. Episode 1, 2, 3, or 4. Just let me know in the comments below. And maybe even which of the three characters you relate to the most. Or four, actually. Wilma, Otto, um, Emma, or our journalist over here. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think. What you would have done differently. Just, just have a general chat with me in the comments below. Anyway. Jarrett says in the next video, whoop, sorry guys, I'm out. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye. See ya. I almost fell off of my chair.